Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at an, a power app that I've just finished building um, that manages a conference or company event. Let's take a little peek at the app and then we'll, we'll work backwards from there. So you can see the app follows um, some pretty strong and, and well tried and tested design principles for web design. You can see at the at the, uh, the landing page that we're on now, we've got a nice image. We've got the title of the event, the date of the event, and a, a, a mission statement. And we also have an option or an invitation to scroll down. Um, I'm going to have an ask of you later on because this currently isn't uh, isn't uh, doesn't work, um, and there is a user voice request out there for us to to make this work. So I'll send a link, and I'd like you to to vote for it because I think controlling the vertical positioning of an element is something that would be awesome. Okay, so as the user hits the site, they've got the company title. So in this case, Contoso. Contoso having their Contoso Fest 2018 on the 3rd of December. Um, as we scroll down, you can see that we have an agenda. Uh, we have all of these the sessions that are going to, going to happen and they're grouped by the time that they start. You can see here we've got the category, so we've got technical sessions, we have customer success sessions, and then some uh, description of the actual session or the session title. Um, in the app, this is just dummy text purely because it's sometimes a lot easier just to to fill up a you know a data source with dummy text to see how it would would work. If we click on um, one of the sessions, let's click on this one here. You can see we get a pop up. Uh, you can see here we've got the ID of the session, uh, the level. So in Microsoft, we have level 100 to 400. 100 is um, introduction slash beginner level. 400 is a, a deep dive. So you can assume this is quite a technical session. You can see here we've got a, a, the, the count or the number of times that this session has been liked. We have the description of the session and then a link to, to register for it. As we scroll down more, um, you can then see that we've got the bios of the speakers. So it's all on one page. Um, how did we? How did I build it? <clears throat> Let's start off by taking a look at the data sources. So if we take a look here, we have a, a SharePoint connection. If we go to the SharePoint connection, you can see that I've set up a site purely for this or site collection, sorry, um, for this event. And then I've created uh, a list called session schedule. Now this is actually um, an add-in or app. So if you go into the site contents and then if you go new app, you can select the calendar template, um, which is what I did. Um, we give it a name. And in, in my case, I gave it a name of session schedule. <clears throat> now um, I've gone ahead of time, I've pre-populated uh, this information. And you can see, well, if, if you take a look, there are a few additional columns that I've added in. Uh, I've added in um, a category, I've added in the presenter, and I've added in de detailed description, light count, level, and session ID. Now, how did I do that? Let me quickly show you. So when we go back into the list, in the ribbon up here, we click on the calendar tab, then we click on list settings. And if you scroll down, you can see this is a list of all the columns. Now I've, uh, I've added, uh, I've, or I've created a column. So for example, the presenter is um, a person or a group. And that's because that allows us then to get their email address uh, and look up their, their image and stuff. Okay, so in the back end, we've got a list for session schedule, and then we've connected the Power App to that list. Uh, you can do that by adding a connection here. And then when the, um, the interface returns, if you have a, uh, a SharePoint connection, you can select it, um, put in the URL <clears throat> of the site, and then select the list. Now with the calendar template, it, it won't actually appear here. So what you would have to do um, is type in the name. So you type in the name of the list. In fact, let me quickly show you. So if we get the site here, <clears throat> I've 
copy the URL of the site, paste that into my box here, and then you would type in the list name there, so session schedule. Uh, and then you click connect. <clears throat> the other data source that I've created, whoops, is, okay. Okay, the other data source that I, I've hooked up is the Office 365 Users Connector. Um, and the reason for that is that it allows me then to look up the profile image if there is one. Okay, so let's talk about this screen. This screen was created using the infinite scrolling template. <clears throat> now, when you add that uh, screen to your to your um, your app, you can add in sections. So I have a section for each one of these panels. <clears throat> so you can see the first panel I've called DC Home, and then within that are all of the the you know the image. And I'll show you the image source in a moment because there is a fantastic website called Unsplash. I don't know if you're aware of it, um, but if you go into here, uh, what did I do? I type in conference. And you see this picture here. So Hermes Riviera. Um, Rivera, thank you very much for your, for your image. Um, I think it worked really well in my app. So I just wanted to pay a little bit of credit to that person there um, because you know it's a fantastic photo. So you can see we've got this hero image. We've then added in the title, the date of the event, and a you know description. And I'm actually using this app internally. So I have um, the Microsoft statement here in you know the, the the internal version. We have obviously Microsoft logos and stuff. So that's the the home screen. The next piece we have is the agenda, and this is where things start to get a bit better um, because we're actually, if you take a look at the agenda. We have a gallery. Now the gallery control, if you go to insert gallery, <coughs> this is basically a way of rendering um, or returning, sorry, multiple items. And then you can choose how, how you want them to, to be displayed on the screen. So I have a, an agenda. And if you look at the items, it is connected to a collection called time slot. We will talk about that in a moment. Then within that, we have a few of the UI items. <clears throat> so we have the small circle here, uh, a vertical line. Um, and while we're here, it's worth you know talking about um, naming conventions. Not that what I do is by any way uh, a best practice, but this is certainly something that I, I find really useful is that I, I use the first three characters as the, the object type. So here it's a shape, there it's a label, um, and then a, then a descriptor. And when you end up with, you know, potentially hundreds of um, elements on the screen, a naming convention is a really good thing. Uh, if you just let it, if you just use out of the box and it says label 01, label 02, label 03, uh, you can, you know, waste a lot of time trying to find, um, trying to find out what's going on. So we have uh, a label here of the time slot. So these are all of the items that are attended in this section have a start time of nine o'clock a.m. So you can see here, I've got the text is starting at, and then the text is this item. So this is the gallery item. Um, <clears throat> and we're, we're grouping them by the event date. Uh, then we have the session. So this is all of the sessions that have been returned with a start time of, of nine o'clock. If we take a look, when you look at the items property of a gallery, you can see that the, the main one has this uh, time slot. So if we take a, a look at view collections, you can see we have a, a collection called time slot. Now at the moment, you can see they have been grouped. So if we if we go back, and we go back to the page and then we take a look at the on visible property, you'll see that as the page loads, we are creating a collection um, called time slot, and we are taking our session schedule collect, uh, connector. So that's the connection back to SharePoint. And we are grouping, we're taking that information and we're grouping it by the event date. And we're calling it session content. 
So when we look at our collections, we have time slot and inside we have session content. Now inside the session, these are all of the sessions that have a start time of nine o'clock, I think it was. Yeah, these are the sessions that have a start time of 10 o'clock. These are the sessions that have a start time of 11 o'clock. And that's what the first um, collection is doing. It's simply grouping those four items, however many items there are. Um, <clears throat> and then the second one is hooked up to the session content. So this is that grouped by information where we can get the where we can get the properties such as the the category. Um, this would be the title. This will be the presenter. So we're using here the Office 365 user connector. And we're using the user photo um, function and we're passing in the presenter's email address we have the presenter's name and then their job title the next thing to point out really is this little arrow here so when you collect it sorry when you click it so on the on select property we collect all of the information about this item so that's this session in this case and we put it into a collection called session information and then we have an update context function. Now, here what we're doing is we're saying um, set set this uh, variable to true. Now, session reg show. What does that do? So if I hold down the Alt key and click the arrow, you can then see that all of a sudden something just appeared on the screen. Now, the visible property. If I select one of these objects here, we have this gallery. Look at the visible property. Yeah, you can see that's set to the variable name. So by default, when the page loads, if we take a look at the page loading and we look at on visible, you can see the session registration show is set to false. So all of these objects are, are hidden. Um, then when we click on the, the uh, arrow key on one of the sessions it changes that variable to true and then this modal as it were kind of kind of appears or pop up whatever you want to call it so here we've got more information about the session where we've got the title more a little bit more about the the, the speaker so we have the the image the name the job title uh, a session id the level the track and how many likes we have a description and then the ability to register now registering i, I Oh, sorry. The the one thing we have there is um, a close button. So again, we just in this when they click it, or when the user clicks it, sorry, we change that session registration variable to false, and then that hides all of the elements on this page. <clears throat> now, when it comes to registering, we've got a few options, um, and this is kind of where I've stopped building the app. Um, but essentially, what we could do is when the uh, user clicks we've got a couple of options we could collect the, this session id um, and then store it in a, in, in a collection so they could build up a list of, um, of sessions that they want to register for or we could simply execute a flow that then added in um, an event into their calendar for example so there are, there are a number of options but i thought this is kind of where i'm going to stop uh, with the demo, but we'll just quickly run through it one last time. <clears throat> so we're using the infinite scroll page. Um, we have a link to previous events. If if there are any, that could be a, an, an additional page in the app that has a list of all of the um, all of the previous events and the content and maybe the video recordings. But we've used the infinite scroll screen uh, with a number of data cards. And we have one for the home page. So this is how the how the page loads. What we want to happen is um, when we click this this scroll down button the, the the ui would update and scroll down like this um, and however at the moment that functionality doesn't exist so i'm going to in the community site i'll provide a link um, to the user voice because i think it would be a fantastic uh, fantastic feature but essentially the next data card is a, is the agenda we spoke briefly about grouping um, you know, connecting to the, the SharePoint data source, grouping all of that content, all of the sessions by the time that they start, um, which we see here. Um, then we have another collection at the bottom, another data card, which shows the speakers. Now, in my tenant, not every 
user has a, um, a profile photo. So that's why I've I've got some sort of standard images for people that don't. Uh, and then we spoke about clicking on the, the arrow, which will go off, um, return the information about the, the actual session, provide information about the likes. Now we could easily update that. There is a function called patch where you could change or you could get the current value of the like count and then add one to it. So every time someone clicks, um, clicks the like uh, icon, it would add one to that total. And then we spoke briefly about registration. Now we've got a number of options. You, know, you could add that to a, like a shopping cart experience where people can build up their schedule, um, check out, you know, the checkout experience would be uh, a flow that creates a number of calendar entries in, in uh, people's calendars, or you could simply add in a calendar entry into people's calendars to say, you know, this is the, the session that you've registered for. Things that I've done in the past for this, you might want to also keep a track of who's been, um, who is registered for which session so that you could follow up with, um, with you know, uh, post event questionnaires. Um, but because there are so many options, I thought I'd just, just stop here. So I hope this demo has been useful. Um, thanks very much for, for, for your time and enjoy Power Apps.